hi, welcome to my shop. It's been a few days since I've been in here, but I still remember the last, or let's say the next thing uh, that I want or need to do on this radio, and that's deal with the very weak 19 meter band. Everything else seems to be in really good shape, in fact, but the 19 meter band, which tunes from about 15 uh, megahertz up to about 15, 350. Um, very weak. Um, so, uh, in order to troubleshoot it, as if there's a component problem or something like that, I have to pull the chassis out. And I don't want to do that right off the bat because maybe it's just really badly aligned. Maybe, maybe that's the issue here and I can simply align this thing back to life. Now, it's a bit of a, a long shot here. The only adjustment for that band that is specific to the 19 meter band is this uh, adjustment here. Uh, it is uh, cranked up a little higher than all the rest, but that doesn't really say too much. So uh, exactly how you could have it that far out, it's just the oscillator, it's just kind of where the radio tunes things in. But I'm going to give it a shot anyway before I pull the chassis out. I think that's a I think that's a smart idea. So let's turn it on. That'd be a smart idea too. There we go. Someone's just come to join me here. While the radio warms up. this up to an outdoor antenna. Oh my gosh, yeah, you're really, it's, it's just like, a, like a week's worth of scratching she's got to catch up on, I guess. Are you done in there? Oh boy. So we're not on the 19 meter band. First time checking uh, the band above, in fact, that runs from 17 megahertz up to 22. chance well a couple things first of all wow trying to receive stuff on short wave up this high uh, under current conditions kind of a long shot but I'm gonna go just make sure my antenna switched here into the shop because I don't think it is come on shadow you can come with me let's go Seventeen megahertz. Uh, not a, but not surprising. The uh, conditions for listening to shortwave are very, very poor. The sun's output is very, very low. Okay, let's flip, even though that wasn't very impressive. Let's flip to 19. So first, the uh, noise disappears. Okay, that sounds pretty normal. You know, another possibility is there's nothing wrong with this band, and I'm just, I've just been wrong about it. Now that sounds pretty darn quiet. Now that sounds bad. Ooh, what was that? Okay. So it sounds like it's oscillating up here. And listen to this. If so I tune it across, it'll be making sounds and then it'll go dead. When it went dead, the magic eye 
popped open down there. I just noticed it. Now if I tune back, it won't come back right away. It'll take a little bit and then it'll come back. So I think that's an oscillation kicking in or kicking out. I'm going to watch the magic eye here. I don't think you can see it on your camera. So the magic eye is indicating that the radio is receiving a signal right now. I'm watching the magic eye for a change. It seems to be fading out slowly here. At the same time the sound is coming in. Something seems to pop right in here, like oscillation wise. It's a really it's just possible when the oscillation takes hold a large AVC voltage is generated and the radio quiets down because of that. Plus a oscillation in the uh, IF uh, with no modulation is not going to produce any sound on the speaker. I think that's what we got going here. I don't think it's an alignment issue at all. Got the signal generator on. Let's fool with it a little bit. It actually sounds like it's sensitive at either end. Kind of sounds that way anyway. Okay, so our signal generator is running at 22 megahertz. Well, let's go up there, see what happens. some weird stuff going on. So we're in 22. Stronger signal. No, no reception. Okay, so we'll take it down out of this There, and we'll see what we can pick up there. So we're at 15,350. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I did something dumb here. Let's go back up. And a little bit confused here. Okay, 15 is where I want to be down here. Okay, let's go through that. It's receiving really good. <laughs> it's receiving everything. It's fantastic. Isn't that something? I listen to that. So, so this again makes me think, and you know, I don't really know, but it makes me think there's all kinds of stuff going on in the detector tube. Lots of signals in there, all getting mixed up with each other, and maybe even getting kind of fed around and back in again to come through for another run generating all those 455 components we could hear there. Wow. Okay, so we'll go down below the, the funny. We'll go, we'll go below the funny here. Oh. Okay, so now it's very, very quiet. 15250. Weird 
sounding. 250. 15. Okay, well, that's actually a little better. Picking it up in two spots isn't so bad. So uh, let's let's just turn down the volume here a little bit, and we'll pick it up at the lower. Tremendous sensitivity here. I got a big signal. Fifteen, two, five, four. Not even fifteen. It's way off. That should be down here. Four hundred and fifty kilohertz IF isn't even the width of this. Uh, so, so pick it up in another spot. Fourteen nine something, <coughs> excuse me, fifteen eight seventy. That sure looks like four fifty five twice in between. Four fifty five is uh, nine ten. Yeah, it could easily be a nine hundred and ten. Fifteen eight seventy. We're at what? Fifteen eight seventy. Fifteen eight seventy is way up here. There is no fifteen eight seventy to tune in. So this is the image. We should not, no, I, I won't say that. That's not the right way to say it. So uh, this is a, a local oscillator. Hmm. You know, there's another issue here, and that is which side of the target signal is the oscillator on? It can be below it or above it. In either way, develop a 455 gap <clears throat> coming through the IF for us to hear. So, it could be I'm simply going above and below the real, the frequency that this should be dialed into. Does that all make sense? Am I making sense here? So if that's the case, <clears throat> I'm all messed up. <clears throat> we would take, I don't like that. As long as I'm looking at this, I'm just confused because it's not even not even on the band here. Is it possible the local oscillator runs below <clears throat> the target frequency? And that would explain. Okay, 15,250. So if you had 4. 55 to what is just a little less than 15, <clears throat> you get a little less than 15, 455, which is off the band here, too. <clears throat> well, it, it does seem like it's way out of alignment. Um, I don't think there's any special instructions for that particular, that particular line. And um, occasionally these things will say, um, start with the thing you're going to adjust turned all the way to one limit and then bring it back back from the limit you'll encounter maybe the first peak that you need to keep or maybe you go past the first and you focus on the second peak but if I'm just starting kind of with that control in the middle of nowhere I don't know where I am really let's, let, let's turn that and see if it isn't working maybe it's not even Maybe it's not even working here. It must be working. Here we go. So I'm going to turn the 15. It's just tuning the radio. Yeah. So if I'm pick, if this is really, if this is what it appears to be, I'm picking up basically 15 megacycles way up here. It's a thousand miles out. So what if I trust that? 
and adjust this pointer all the way back to here. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, let's try that. Amazingly enough, I'm hardly turning this adjustment at the back here. Bet you I haven't gone around more than two rotations. What happened? Where'd it go? Okay, so I'll put this right on 15. 050, put this on 15050. Find it now. Where are you? to the other end. And we got action here. Picking 1550 up just up here, I couldn't tell you why. Still getting funny stuff. Now it sounds like it's working. What is this telling me about this band? Is it really working? 15, 3, 350, 15, 375. Yep. Then what is happening here? good sensitivity. What's happening on the other side of the groan? Okay, here in the quiet zone. Fifteen one seventy five. Wow, it's a great radio man. It picks up everything everywhere. Can't complain about this. If there's a station out there, this radio's gonna pick it up. You don't even need to tune it. I'm picking up multiple, multiple situations where there's a 455 component because you hear it jumping out of the speaker. But the other bands don't do this. This is this is what's got me a little bit stilted here. And as far as I can see there's really no particular component that's just for the 19 meter band, no capacitor or whatever. I think I'm gonna study the schematic for a little while. See if I can't come up with an explanation for why the 19 meter band behaves so differently from everything else in this radio, including the band above it, the band that's actually receiving higher frequencies. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. By the way, my Christmas gift. Fantastic. Okay, got some other stuff to show you, but I'll show you that later as we go along. I'm going to go study for a little bit here. This has really become very curious. Uh, it's not at all going quite <laughs> where I thought it was going to go. No surprise there. Okay, so uh, what I've 
I, I have studied the schematic a bit. I, I really can't spot any discrete component. I was hoping for a capacitor or something like that. That's just in the 19 meter band circuit. It's not. There, I couldn't find anything like that. So um, what I decided to do was look a little closer at the local oscillator using the uh, SDR radio so we can actually look at the local oscillator frequency. So let's just think about this a little bit. Radio right now is tuned to 15.2. So 455 above that would be 15.655. So that's where the local oscillator should be, 15.650. Okay, so let's flip over to the, um, well, first, first, ha have a look in the back of the radio here. So this is the pickup coil here uh, for the SDR radio. It's just sitting in here, it's nothing special going on pick this spot because I know already this is where I can pick up the local oscillator signals right around the uh, mixer tube and all this kind of stuff. So that's what's going on there. Let's take a look now and see what we can see. Okay, so the uh, SDR radio here is tuned to 15640. That's where this red line is. And, and what did I say the local oscillator should be? It was something right up in that area. So I'm going to tune the radio. That'll vary the local oscillator frequency. You'll see it on the screen here. There it is. So so it's the one that's coming down. It's around 15, just past the red line. Coming down to 15. Wow, well, you heard the radio do something there. Didn't see anything. Funny. I'm almost at the end of the run now. That's the bottom of the of the band right there. 15500. You know what? That's exactly correct. Because the dial is pointing to... Well, you know what? It's pointing to 15. Almost 15. So this should be almost 15455. Kinda is there, isn't it? I'm gonna put the red line right on here. 15.505, and we really want this to be 15.455. Well, we don't want it to be that, but it's, you know, that, like that's the proper local oscillator frequency. It's not way out of whack. Is there some other? Let me just move the screen over here. Okay, local oscillator sitting here now. 15.500, let me just see if there isn't another oscillation in here. So I'm tuning the radio. That's interesting. I read where that sound was. I am seeing something interesting here. So if we look at well, it's a number of interesting things. Now, in doing this SDR stuff, uh, often I find lots of signals flying back and forth, sometimes moving at the same rate as the signal I'm interested in, other times moving at double, triple the rate. I don't know what those things are. So, for instance, what I'm talking about, if you forget the big one with the blue line underneath, that's the real local oscillator frequency. But if you look over closer where the red line is, just to the left of it, you can look at the left or the right. You'll see as I'm tuning the radio there are frequency components moving around. What those are exactly I don't know. Are those really real or not? Now here's what I want to show you that's really interesting I think anyway. If you take a look at the other end now around 15, well, say 15 to 60. There's not much to see there. There's one frequency standing Still, when I tune the radio, everything else is moving. So watch that one and listen to the radio. Watch that one that's standing tall, not moving. I can point it out with the cursor. This one, just a whoop. Oh, I've moved everything now. This one that's right under the green line, uh, right there. That one. Watch it. Keep watching it.
is this? Well, it's really... <laughs> ah, it's a little like trying to explain the universe here. Okay, so looking at the word shortwave broadcast, or the words shortwave broadcast, right above the H, why, uh, this component moves as I tune the radio. So I guess my first question is, what is that stable frequency that is just sitting right, right there? Well, what is that exactly? Um, let's, let's measure it here. Oops. Okay, so the... So that's the exact frequency of that mystery peak, 15.317. Now, my signal generator is tuned to 14.3. It's way off of there. Can it, can it possibly be implicated? So I'm going to tune the signal generator which is still connected to the uh, antenna. I'm going to tune it a bit. Here we go. Anything moving up there? I see nothing moving. Oh. Okay, so I'm just going back and forth. So that's 14.8. We shouldn't hear this. Now that's 15.75 or so. 15.075. That's roughly where the radio's tuned, so we should hear this. Uh, what happened there? Wow, I mean, just added to more curiosity. So what I'm commenting about is a local oscillator is sitting there at a frequency, and as I approach the tuned frequency, right, 15.1, 15... One, 15 Sort of, yeah. As I approach the tuned frequency with the signal generator, the local oscillator jumps. So I'm just, just kind of sweeping back and forth a little bit across the tuned point of the radio and seeing the local oscillator jump. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. Um, 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 um. <laughs> Let's try another band. Let's just go to another band. We'll go, go to the 25 meter band. That's around 11.7. Oh, bear with me here. Okay. Okay, 11.7, eh? So, uh, we can go 11.8, just to pick somewhere, 11.8, Hmm. nice, strong 11. Eight. Easy to tune radio by the way. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, the question is what's happening to the local oscillator as I tune the signal back and forth across it? So I get the local oscillator up there. So 11.8 plus 455, 12,255. Jump back. Jump back. 12, 255, 12, 2, 55. So there it is there. That, that's got to be a rate, right beside the red line. I'll tune the radio touch and see what happens to it. There it is moving. Okay, and I'm going to set it still. 
and I'm going to tune the signal generator and I'm going to watch the uh, straight line. So, uh, so wobbling a little wee bit. Look at the straight line on the waterfall display as I tune the signal generator across. There's a little bit of action there, isn't there? It does, it does move, but I'm looking at it as it goes down the waterfall display. It does shift a bit. another band. I'm just going to go down another band here. 31 meter band. 9... 9.5... almost 9.6. I just dial down to... Okay, there it is. 9.6 and we'll change this to 9.6. Also... 9.6 roughly. 9.6 is over here. I'm going to move it towards the center. 9.6, put the red line. So there's the local oscillator right there. I'm going to tune the radio to prove it. Oh, I like that. I was wrong. Local oscillator. <laughs> Not here. I don't know what that is. This is the local oscillator up here. Is that correct? Roughly 10, so we subtract 455 from 10, we get, what do we get? Uh, I'm tired, I'm wearing out here. We get 95 something. And tune to, yeah, 95 something. Okay, so that all makes sense. So what, what, what? this is. I don't know. Let's listen to it. We'll listen to it with the SDR. The SDR is tuned to it. I'll turn on the speaker here. Just a hiss. Okay. Who knows? Yeah. What am I doing? Oh yeah, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna tune the signal generator across the tuned frequency of the radio. Right. I, I am wearing it there, that's for sure. Okay, here we go. Once again, the local oscillator wiggles. So maybe this is an effect I've just never ever noticed. Now the interesting thing is, if you not if you tune the radio, I don't know if you could ever even perceive this effect. So let's try. I'll tune the radio now. Try and tune it slowly, steadily across. So the waterfall line is nice and steady. It's not. Let me get back on that again. Yeah, you know, it does, like the, I'm looking at the uh, waterfall display, the line looks pretty darn straight. I'm trying to turn my hand on the dial as smooth as I can. So, so what does that mean exactly? Then, for instance, if you have a, what happens if you're tuned into a fading signal? So, uh, let me get the signal generator tuned in again. I'm just totally forgotten about what it is I'm trying to do. I found something much more interesting <laughs> to look at. Um, what am I doing? So I want to. So I've got the radio tuned to. We're doing this at 9.575. 9.575. 9. Yeah, there we are. 575. 
Now I was going to make the signal stronger and weaker. As soon as I get it tuned in maximal here. It's not not a lot of movement in that local oscillator, but let's let's see. I will uh, without retuning the signal generator, I will I will knock out its signal strength. Watch that local oscillator line. Look at that. It moved. How do you like that? That means as a station fades in and out, the local oscillator is drifting back and forth. This cannot be welcome. This cannot be welcome. Uh, let me fade it out here, fade out the signal generator. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. I'm feeding it slowly. I'm fading it back up slowly. And back up full. Wow, okay. So you know I never I've never even crossed let me get the cameras back on here. Wow, you know what? It's never even crossed my mind that that you could have a, a local oscillator sensitive to the. I'm going to guess it's the AVC voltage um, that's fiddling around with the oscillation of the local oscillator. Does that make sense? I think it does because uh, anytime we have something coming out of the local oscillator, coming out of the IF rather. The local oscillator seems to, to shift. Wow, okay, so this has to be considered a really critical design problem. You know what, I'll bet you this is one of the main design problems that radio designers face, is trying to get a local oscillator that sticks where you put it and doesn't wander around as other things happen with the radio. Well, uh, what to do about that? And what to do about the weak? 15, which is still weak, and are these things all tied together somehow? Is this all, is all tied together? It's not tied together in my head, that's for sure. So, uh, what to do next? I think the next thing I got to do is stop for a while and think. Just let, just let some more synapses uh, fire, and see if. Uh, And see, okay, true of all bands, so it appears that the wandering local oscillator. I never looked for this in another radio, but then again, I do so much stuff with them. You'd think I, if it happened, I would have seen it by now. This 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 appears to be the first radio. Oh man, and it could be such a subtle, subtle thing that's going on in there. It could be everything from the positioning of wires. They're, they're because of work I've done. Now things are positioned such that this interference problem has occurred, which wouldn't normally be there had the radio been built exactly the way it's supposed to be built in the factory and not rebuilt. Maybe I moved a capacitor around. I, I, who knows what I could have done that has introduced this very subtle problem. How big of a problem is it? You know, you kind of automatically tune it out when you're tuning things in. I mean, the fact that it's wandering a bit is a small factor because you're making it wander a lot when you tune. So, and we saw how in, in tuning action, you can't even tell this is happening. How could you possibly tell? Only if it was really dramatic. And, and even then, to, to me, it's possible that tuning process you would just automatically compensate for it without even knowing it. But I think it's an interesting thing to investigate in order to understand better how radios work or how they don't. Um, well, I'm going to have to think of some, some way of, of uh, poking into this problem. I still have the problem with the 19 meter band being, it appears to oscillate, appears to be insensitive. I wonder if I have a another component replacement error in there that I made five years ago that really only haunts you on the 19 meter band. No. Okay. 
I'm going to go away now and think and ponder. Hey, thanks so much for watching uh, my video. I'm happy to be back after Christmas. I've got lots of projects in mind, including uh, a starved plate amplifier. Hey, how about that? So, see you on the next video with this radio.